Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. Hey I'm here to enable your yarn addiction so no four letter words here. So no yarn diet today. Let's begin today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's hosted by friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we have a new hat pattern. It's called the Crochet Showtime Hat. This is an adaptation of an existing hat that we did back in 2014 called the Crystal Ice Hat. And so what I wanted to do is update the yarn and also update the hook size and also get rid of the slip stitching. So what I'm using on camera today is called Red Heart Roll With It Melange. The coloring is called Theater. Now this coloring here that you see is called Showtime. You can see that the coloring is absolutely amazing. But what I've done for you is that we've eliminated, we meaning all my personalities, we've eliminated the slip stitching so you don't see any slipping at all because we're gonna work in a continuous round right from the very beginning. So the way that we're gonna start this is going to be unique. So what I wanted to do is create this because these kind of ideas when you have this kind of yarn when there's a slip stitch and a change of a row you can really see that jump. And so what I wanted to do is make the coloring flow completely right from start to finish so that I don't have a hat that has like the slip stitching that I uh, would want to deny that's actually there. So today we're going to be working with this. You'll need a size G, a four millimeter hook and one particular one of these balls here can do two hats and these are the adult size and it's an average adult size. So we have the instructions to download if you want that. Just uh, see the more information of this video and you can see a direct link for that and in the meantime we're gonna get started right away. So watch how we start because it's gonna be unique and make sure you have a stitch marker available to you. So let's begin our hat. I need you to keep an extra long tail like you see here and you're going to be using that to sew it to make it look more seamless at the very beginning of this. So the very beginning we're gonna work in a continuous spiral right from the start and that's right now. So you'll need that long strand and we'll be dealing with that pretty quickly in this project. So let's uh, get started with the slip knot and I need you to chain 80 and when you do the chain 80 do not join it at the end of the chain. We're gonna work with that with round number one and that's where the fun is going to begin. So just start chaining and chain 80. If you would like to change the size of this if you don't like it, if you keep it in multiples of five you can make it actually child size version. Don't ask me what the stitch counts are though because that's something that you may be able to figure out on your own because I haven't done my research to change all the sizes. So if you keep it in sets of five it works out. So chain 80 for those that would like to make this pattern. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and do all the way to 80 and meet me back here in a moment. So I now have my 80 and what I need to do is that we are not going to technically join this. What we're going to do is that we're technically going to start and we're just going to immediately jump to the first one and start all the way around. So when you do this you're just gonna just position it so that there's no twist in your chain. So just kind of work through your chain making sure that there's no twist. And you're gonna go all the way to the other side. What we need to do is start round number one. So when we start round number one I always like to stick to the back loop of the, ch of the chain. If you don't like that then don't do that. And what I need you to do is that just pull things nice and tight and we're gonna start officially round number one. So you're gonna start round number one on the very first chain on the back loop and to do that you're just going to half double crochet. Your goal is to make sure that you have only 80 half double crochets all the way around on round number one and you also have to make sure that it's not got a weird twist at the end which we can fix. So staying on the back loop only just half double crochet. So this is technically the first stitch of the first round and what I want you to do is that I want you to just continue along the back loops only and just go all the way across and I'll meet you on the other side in just a moment. Okay so I'm back. I officially have 80 here. So you notice that I did not join to the very beginning of where I started. What I have to watch for is how I'm gonna do that. So I have to make sure first of all that there's only 80 half double crochets which there are and I gotta make sure that this brim does not have a weird twist in it because if it does that well it'll have a permanent infinity twist. So using it like here just follow it around and keep pulling on it and it will naturally untwist itself. So you know exactly where the top is when you begin to do this. Okay, 
So that's how it's gonna look. Now I'm not gonna deal with the loose end yet. I'm gonna wait for one more round but make sure it's towards you. And so when you go over, over top you're going to be starting in the very first stitch which is right here. Okay, see how it's offset? That's intentional. And what I need you to do also is to insert a stitch marker right here on the last stitch. And every time you get to the last stitch I want you to move that stitch marker up so that you can keep a count. And this is officially round number one. So whenever we start then the next stitch becomes the first um, stitch of the new round. And so the last stitch is always gonna be marked. So what we're going to do then is start with round number two. So two, three, four, five, and six are all the same. And I'm just gonna go around once and then I'm gonna deal with this long loose end and show you how that's gonna work. And just make sure that there is not uh, an infinity twist to this. And let's begin. Let's start round number two next. The next five rounds are going to be the camel stitch. So let's just get you in real close and let's show you what that is. You're going to half double crochet and you're gonna half double crochet on the back horizontal bar. So I need you to see the top of the stitches. So you see one and two and it is the third bar in behind. So just push it and, and just move it forward. So when you crochet you're gonna go on the back bar and this is going to turn the top of the stitch so that it stays in the front of the work. And then that's where you're gonna half double crochet. Once you do the first one it's so easy to see the next one. It's right here. See this is the top and this is the horizontal. This is the third bar in behind. And all you need to do is just camel stitch this all the way around. And this is going to turn the top of the stitch over to create this beautiful line that you see in the brim. And what I want you to do is go all the way to the stitch marker and that's where I'm gonna meet you up and I'm gonna show you how to deal with the very beginning stitch that we had. And I'll be back in a moment. So I've now come up all the way around on number two. I moved up the stitch marker. So the stitch marker was here. This was the last stitch. So I moved up the stitch marker so it's in the new last stitch. You're gonna keep doing that even, even every time. I've also verified that there's still 80 stitches. If you don't have 80, maybe 79, just put two um, um, camel stitches in the very last stitch to get yourself to 80. If you had like 81, then what you can do is that you can do a two together camel stitch um, as well and to get yourself back to 80. So make sure that you're doing that. Sometimes you can go off on the first round just to make sure. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you how to deal with this loose end here and we're going to secure that in now. And so our goal is to kind of pull this so that it becomes a nice flat edge across. So we're going to use a tapestry needle for that. And so I'm gonna put that in. And I want to pull this over Okay, so I'm gonna just take this and I'm just gonna weave my way in and out of the interior of the stitches. Just a few, just about an inch or so, like that. And I'm gonna pull that in and what this is going to do is it's gonna pull that jagged edge and it's gonna pull it flat. There you go. It's, it, it's not a perfect flat but it's pretty close. And so then you'll go back in the opposite direction. Stay towards the interior of the hat so you, you don't mess with any of the exterior look especially with the camel stitch looking so good and seamless. So stay in the interior and go all the way back. And then all the way back once again in a different path. And for extra I would go one more time. So you see it's you go on three times I would go four in this one. The further that you go the le less likely things fall out on you anyway. And so now you can officially get rid of that tail. And so your edging will be as flat as it's possibly going to be. It's not gonna be perfect but it's gonna be pretty close. And then once you start wearing it it'll smoothen itself out. So now we're going to begin rounds number three, four, five, and six which I'll have you do on your own and let's do that now. 
So let's do rounds number three, four, five, and six. That's four rounds. It's continuing to do the camel stitch. So you just start immediately on the very next one. Stay on the camel stitch back bar itself and just continually go around and mark it off on your list. Move your stitch marker up as you go and please now do rounds number three, four, five, and six and then I'll pick you up from that point and continue along into the body of the hat. So please do that now. I'll be back in a moment. So we're now just finished this and we're at the end of round number six. So seven, eight, and nine are going to be each the same thing. So we're now going to do single crochet but you're going to work on the back loop only. So in crochet there's a top of the stitch. The loop that's closest to you is the front loop. The other loop that's away from you is the back loop. And so that's where you're gonna play. So you're no longer playing on the back bar anymore. So this is going to make a ridge. And so I need you to do for rounds number seven, eight, and nine just going in the back loop only of your stitch work. So this is half the double crochet this time but it will be the back loop of the single crochet next time and do three rounds. You're going to be using the front loops in the future so you gotta make sure that you do this or you won't have anything to play with. So please do rounds number seven, eight, and nine in the back loop only of single crocheting around. I'm now technically at the end of number nine so we're gonna move up to number 10. So 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 is part of a repeat that you will repeat over once completely and then repeating from 10 to 12 just once after that. So what I'm about to show you is a, a really interesting technique of creating the ridges that will go up on an angle. So let's take a look at the real sample and show you what we're gonna get involved with. So here on the real sample what we need to do is do these drop downs. This is the front uh, loop treble that comes on down. So it's the furthest one down so this has to be the first time that we do it. So there's always four stitches that are in between these drop downs. So remember when you drop down that's counted as the stitch that it's sitting in front of. So this is where this is one, two, three, four, five and then it comes down again. One, two, three, four, five. Everything is working on this. So the next time that we go to play with this is that we are going to have this start sooner and so the number that uh, count that it takes to get there is quicker in order to make that happen. So you just gotta remember that everything is always gonna be in sets of five until we get to the top of shaping of the hat. So let's show you how to work that out. So here on the pattern what we need to do is that for round number 10 you're going to single crochet in the back loop only so stay still in the back loops because you're going to be using the front loops in the future. So you're gonna do the first four. So we have one, two, three, and four. Then the next one is a front, uh, front treble in the front loop down three rows below. So follow it straight on down and you will get to the third one down. So wrap the hook twice and use the front loop only and then just treble yourself all the way back up to where you are. So that counts as the stitch that it's going to sit in front of. So you're, that one you're just gonna automatically skip because it's considered the same stitch. So then you will single crochet in the back loop for the next four. So we have one, two, three, and four. Now because you're getting started for the very first time you don't have a, like a, a, an anchor point to look at. So what I would do if I were you is that you see that you got the front loop here. So count over and you're gonna see the next four in a row. So one, two, three, four and the fifth one is the next one that comes straight on down. So if you're ever questioning life you just can look at the last one and put it into the same stitch by just jumping the same number of stitches in, in the rows, three rows below. And remember that counts as the stitch is sitting in front of so you immediately jump to the next one and do the next four. So one, two, three, and four and then do the front post treble and if you're not sure just count out and skip to the fifth one. So one, two, three, four. The fifth one here is the one that you're coming into. You can probably look and see that without having to do that but it's a good way to verify that that's true. Okay and then you start in the next one. So please do this all the way around for round number 10. You will be repeating round number 10 uh, in the future. It's the same thing but next time you, you do number 10 you'll have an anchor point to be able to see. So it will be very clear on where you need to go. So one, two, three, four, and five. Please do this all the way around. I'll be back in a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around and I just have to do the very last drop down as the last stitch. 
and I'm gonna come on down as we go. Okay. Now if something is wrong you can always just add an extra stitch if you have to just to get yourself established to make sure that you're staying in the right um, point. Make sure that you're still in sets of five and you know make it or uh, make it or fake it right. Fake it or make it and then you'll be good to go. So let's begin to do round number 11. So 11, 12, 13 and 14 is the same concept but the difference is the drop down location will change. When you hit number 11 you're going to start off and this time you're only gonna put three single crochets in the back loop only. So we have one, two and three. And that's because you need to drop down before this one happens. So you gotta be having this stitch ready for you. So this time it's three rows below so it's just gonna be one step up from the last time that you did it. Like there. Once you get that first one done that counts as the stitch that it's sitting in front of so make sure you don't use that and start in the next one which is the top of the next front post treble. And you're gonna do the next four in a row. So even though it has a different count of starting it's still only four single crochets between them. And if your counts are right when you get your four you'll be in the one before the drop down and then you'll drop that counts as the one that's sitting in front of and then start in the next front post there and do one or sorry front uh, loop. So one, two, three and four and then drop. So all you're just doing is just paying attention to where the stitches fall and making sure they start building up on an angle. So please do this all the way around for round number 11. When you come around to number 11 here you are still doing the drop down. Okay, you can see the stitch markers next and that is the last stitch. Okay, so you end with a one single crochet as being your last in the back loop only. Let's move up our stitch marker and let's move to number 12 next. So let's begin number 12. See this is getting closer to the seam line to where you had. So you're only gonna do the next two in a row. So one and two and then drop on down because you gotta drop down the one before. Okay, so you're just three rows below. So it's a step up again and then you do the next four in a row. So one, two, three and four and look to where it drops and that it becomes very easy to on the repeat. So you'll go all the way around just doing the same concept as you already know. You've already started off your special way of a certain count and then everything else is the same as you know it. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 12. When you come around to number 12 you're just ending at a different spot. That's why the repeat comes around and then you're just going to single crochet the last two in the back loop only and then that's the end. So everything is still working up on an angle. So let's move on to number 13 next. Let's do round number 13. So the next one is only just one single crochet in the back loop and then you immediately have to drop down in the next. And then from there it's just what you know. So it's gonna be the four single crochets in the back loops only. And just look at the texture you can clearly see where things need to go and then you just drop on down. So do this all the way around. Round number 13. I'll be back in a moment. I'm coming to the end of number 13 and in the end of number 13 there's three single crochets after the last drop down and that will conclude that. And now we're gonna go on to round number 14 which will be the end of the repeat cycle in a moment. So please do that. Round number 14 is we're going to immediately just start the first stitch with just doing the drop down. Okay, so we're getting right to the action first and then the next four are your single crochets in the back loops only. Okay, you already know what you're doing with the repeating going all the way around. So please do this. This is round number 14 and then we'll talk about the repeating when we get back. At the end of number 14 there is four single crochets in the back loop only before you get back to the stitch marker. So let's review the repeating that we have and you'll have to repeat the instructions and I'll leave that in your capable hands and then I'll be back to help you shape the top after that. So let's talk about the repeat. So let's begin to think about the repeat. So I need you to go back and do rounds number 10 through 14 one more time and then 10 through 12 once 
after that. And what you can do, there's video chapters in this, in this video so that you can look at that to get yourself right back to the video um, sequence. And then to start again, if you wanna review, is that in round number 10, right where you're sitting, you'll do the next four single crochets in the back loop only. And this time in number 10, you're not trying to figure out where the stitches are gonna drop. You can clearly see it this time. And so then, then, then you'll drop and etc. So I need you now to please do rounds number 10 through 14 once, then 10 through 12 once, and then I will pick you back up at the moment at, to shape the top. So please do that sequence and I'll be back in a moment. So now I've done the repeat. So we did 10 through 14 once and then 10 through 12 once. This is where we're gonna be picking up on round number 23 for shaping of the top. We're now going to start reducing stitches in order to bring ourselves to a conclusion for the top of the hat to bring it to a rounded edge. Let's begin to do the 23rd round. Let's begin the 23rd round and we're going to start a reduction and it's really quite easy to do. So we're going to be eliminating one stitch out of the set of five. So how we're gonna do it is that we're right where we're sitting, we're gonna do the back loop single crochet in the first and then drop down with the front loop treble. Now when we've been doing this, we've been skipping the automatically the one behind. I need you to also skip this one here, right there. This is the front uh, loop treble. And then immediately just come in and go into the next and do the next three only. So one, two, and three. Do you see that? So instead of the groups in a five, you're only making groups of four this time. So drop on down. So when you're skipping, you're skipping over this one right here. So you automatically skip the one you're sitting in front of plus this one. And then you do your single crochet in the back loop only. So I need you to do this all the way around for round number 23. When you get around on the 23rd, you're still skipping where you're supposed to. So you'll end up with just single crocheting the last two single crochet with the, the back loops and then move your stitch marker up. And let's do the 24th round next. So we're still keeping in the sequence of having this come up on an angle. So the very first stitch when you start this round will be the front loop treble coming down and you're going to skip the next front loop treble. So you're skipping the one that you're automatically sitting in front of anyway plus the next one. And then you're going to only single crochet then in the back loop the next two in a row. And then you'll have to drop down again. So drop down. So you're just skipping. Okay and so you'll come to the one after the front loop treble here. And then just do two in a row and then drop again. Please do this all the way around for round number 24. Coming around on the 24th round, you're just skipping what you normally need to skip and then the last two stitches are single crochet in the back loop only. We're gonna just move our stitch marker up and go to the 25th round next. In the 25th round, I felt that if I reduce too quickly, I end up with a hole. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna just show you what I'm uh, about to do. So you're just gonna single crochet, you're gonna maintain the stitches basically. So you're just gonna come in right into the immediately, the first one, and you'll single crochet the first two stitches that are in the back loops only. And then you're gonna drop. So you're not actually reducing any stitches at all. You're just gonna maintain, okay? So you skip the one that you normally would sit in front of anyway. So you just come immediately to the next one. So you'll single crochet the next two and then drop. And I need you to do this all the way around for number 25. And this keeps the same stitch count as before. So this will give it some time to be able to flex over top of your head. Please do this all the way around. I'll be right back for number 26 in a moment. So I'm coming to the end of number 25 and I've already moved my stitch marker and I'm now ready to go. 26 is what we have to watch out for the most because in 26 we end slightly different. In the 26th row when we go all the way around we are going to be coming and finishing on the last on the second last stitch. So right where this is is not where we're gonna end up. So we wanna make sure that we're gonna end up here. So just keep an eye on that. So let's begin the 26th. So what, right where we're sitting, we're going to immediately just single crochet in the back loop only the next stitch and then you're going to drop down 
to what you already know. Now we have to skip the next stitch which is this one right here. So you're skipping the one that's sitting in front of anyway plus you're skipping this next front loop treble. So then you're going to single crochet the back loop of the next and then drop on down. This is going to do a really serious reduction on this one. So this means that you're gonna skip the next front loop and then just single crochet the next and then drop on down. Okay, and you're skipping that, so that one and then single crochet the next. So I need you to do this all the way around. The reduction is gonna be quite serious and we're getting close to the very end of this. This is round number 26. So I'm coming to the very last one. I gotta do my drop down and then this is where I'm gonna finish. So I'm finishing one stitch early and that's because that stitch needs to be skipped. So move that stitch marker up to where you're currently sitting. So you're technically just eliminated at one stitch by you did, by doing that in the in the repeating. I want you to come all the way over here first and we're going to only use these front loop trebles. So ignore this one and because it's supposed to be skipped and you're gonna do a half double crochet front post around the treble front loop there. Okay and you're gonna just do those stitches only. So jump to the next one and do half double crochet front post and just keep moving around and pulling those all together and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming all the way around to the very end. This is where the stitch marker was before and then I'm gonna move my stitch marker up one last time for the final round. So the last round is nice and simple and you're gonna start in the very next stitch in these half double crochet front posts. So just single crochet into each stitch going all the way around and then we're going to conclude and finish this hat with just the sewing part. So let's do that and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm getting all the way back around to where the stitch marker is and that's it. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna back you out a little bit here and we're gonna create a long tail and I want you to pull that through and you can remove your stitch marker if you want to at this point as well. I need you to grab a tapestry needle and I need you to gather the top remaining hole to close this out. Okay, so you have a hole that's in the top. So just using that, just weave in and out of the stitch work going all the way around and then at the end of this we're gonna pull that and it will pull the middle shut. Okay, so once you got it all woven in just kind of pull it through and then come directly across and pull that shut and then go in a cross formation and do that one going across. Once you have that done just put your hand on the inside and be careful not to stab yourself and take this directly through the top of the hat and turn your hat inside out. Once you have this on the inside then just take it so that it can tie itself into a knot. Even though it's the inside of the hat doesn't mean you want tails. So just weave it in and out of the work about three times and therefore you can safely then cut it. And this will conclude off your hat. And you can try it on and enjoy. So this is the Showtime hat and please enjoy and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.